Welcome, welcome, patrons. So this past December, I held a charity event for Dragon Age Day, with one of the incentives being buying a topic for me to do a video on. There are five of these videos that got sold, two normal topics and three character topics, and I'll be sprinkling these into my normal content for the next few months, so today marks the very first one. An anonymous donor wrote, I've always wanted to see you dive into the codex entries you get for the completed murals in Skyhold. I think there's some interesting lore hints there. And they are completely right. This is actually something I've wanted to do for like a while, but I just kept pushing it back for like more basic topics and world building because I still got a lot of that to go through. But anyway, let's talk about the Dragon Age Inquisition mosaics. The quest. So for those who haven't played or never really cared, because it's not really a reward to it, uh, in Dragon Age Inquisition, you can find these little golden squares around all the levels. These squares are pieces of larger murals that are hung in Skyhold's halls once you get there. There are five mosaics in total, and once you complete one, you can talk to a dwarven man named Gatsy in the hall to unlock a codex entry about him talking about the images of the mosaics. The problem with the quest is that on top of having the player collect 60 total pieces for this to be completed without any reward, the reward is just doing it. Once you do, the actual image is actually really hard to make out in game. Um, if you are a PC player, I do recommend this mod, which adds color to the mosaics and allows you to make out sort of what's going on, but even that is pretty difficult just because it's so shiny. So while the textures have been available in the file since the game's release, I have not actually seen them floating around online at all, like ever. Uh, and the concept art for the murals wasn't actually released until late last year, which even then, it's a very small image that cuts two of the murals off a bit. But all that aside, does the actual image actually matter that much? Gatsy's notes does a great job of describing what's going on and even pointing out things that we would never be able to see even with the texture extracted. So with all that being said, let's go over the mosaics one by one and talk about each. The mosaics. So before I begin, we need to talk about the in-lore history of these pieces. So we don't actually know that much, but Gatsy notes that this is a Dorvan work about Tevinter history, and he refers to the carver as a woman constantly. I'm not actually sure why, like if he knows that it had to have been a woman or even know who it was, but he does it in every codex. He also noticed that the woman was likely a Tevinter herself, meaning that she probably lived in the Dorvan settlement there in Manrathus, uh, but that's really all we know about her. When this was made, literally all that is said, it is early. We'll get more about that in a bit. Also, while I did extract the game image files for the mosaics, they are still just a little bit muddy, probably on purpose, and I had to piece together the final piece in Photoshop, so it's a little bit wonky, particularly on the edges. Anyway, freed our slaves. Probably the most outright of the mosaics, this one is showing just a bunch of Canari slaves. Also, uh, just a fun fact, this is actually called Vanquished in the files, which I think is actually a better overall name, but to be honest, I can never remember the names of any of these mosaics except Freed or Slaves because it's such a bad name to me. So maybe jokes on me, I suppose. But anyway, I would have almost nothing to say about this piece except Gatsy says something interesting about it. The three central figures were added in later, and instead there were seven magisters looking over the slaves. Gatsy figures that the three figures were added in later when a magister bought the piece and wanted to be in it, so what we see now is likely just some random rich asshole, uh, but uh, we have no idea who. If seven magisters did enslave a bunch of Canari, and then uh, later on in the other murals, these same magisters break into the Golden City, I have some questions, which uh, we'll just get to it a bit because it's more relative into the next mural, which is sacrifice. The codex for this notes that the faces are highly detailed and more likely done from portraits, which as a side note, that means that if this is supposed to be the Magister Sidereal, then Corypheus and the architect are in this carving, assuming that the artist is able to work from portraits of them. Now there are more than seven people, and to be honest, they all look pretty similar, so I'll let you match the face to the blighted Magisters we know and love, but one of them is someone we know. Anyway, Gatsy guesses that this is about Magisters going into the Fade and their blood magic ritual to break in. While there are obviously horned canary skulls floating about, Gatsy notes that the sacrifice in the center used to have horns as well, but it was chipped off at a later date. Why? I have no idea. Now, probably the biggest question to ask is this, is this a metaphor or based on historical fact? 
Was the carver angry at Tevinter on how they handled the canari when this was made, or did she know that the magisters used canari in the ritual? That didn't show up in Thetis for almost a thousand years later. Corpheus mentions to a Canari Inquisitor that their race was a mistake. So did the Carver know of this mistake? If so, how? And is that why the horns were taken off? Because why were those horns taken off and then not like the ones in the Freed Are Slaves taken off? Is that why, like, the magisters were taken off? Because it was easier to take the magisters off? I There's just a lot of questions here on when this was made, and what does it mean? Invasion. Now, Gassy starts out by saying that of the seven magisters sewn, only five are detailed because two have been chipped away in a way that would suggest vandals. Gassy also goes on about how the masonry of the piece is kind of a bit wonky. Anyone with a sense of stone will tell you that this piece is coming down under its own weight. It's intentional because it's a god's house, but I'm not sure what the style mishmash has to do with wonder of that. If this were a real place from that long ago, you see only Tevinter in the architecture. But this looks like typical post-Empire bluster, adding elven bits like they always owned it. That's an artist for you. A mason would have at least gotten it the right way around. Tevinter foundation with an elven overlay, not muddled. So this one is probably the hardest to make out what it is, and to be honest, I sat here looking at the raw file and the concept art for days, not knowing what the figure on the left was. Uh, there's also a whole bit here where I wasn't counting that figure and then thought there were seven because I'm an adult that can count, but we're not going to relive that. Um, but... <laughs> I sat here looking at this thing and I went all the way through scripting and recording and highlighting the figures on the image of Photoshop and editing the audio until finally, when matching my own words with images in the final stages of editing process, realized that this was actually another magister. This is why this video is late. <laughs> I had been looking at this thing for literally weeks until I noticed that this is actually feet, which just suddenly makes the image clear of what this actually is. It's a person. So then the final call for the magisters in this piece are eyeball, ball gown, big staff, faint trident, feet, which is their new name, and the two people in the air which are so indistinguishable that uh, they're just going to be lumped as one. Uh, one of them is carrying a staff that you can see in the concept art, but I cannot make it out in the mural, so there it is. And per Gatsy's words, I would guess that Feats and Faint Trident Man are the ones that were chipped away, because I think they're the hardest to make out. But it could have been the two in the air, because they are basically just silhouettes, so I don't really know. But the symbols on eyeball are probably the most prominent of any of the mosaics, although I have no clue what any of them could mean. For a good moment, I actually thought that the symbol on his robe was an upside down cute symbol, but looking at the concept art for it, it is clearly not that. I know that some people like to say that the eyeball is a symbol for the Inquisition, so maybe he was part of the Inquisition. But while there was a in Inquisition that did exist a long time before we let in game, but the events that this depicts predates the first inquisition by almost 300 years. So while there is a lot of interesting things to look at here, I can't actually give you any more information than what the codex tells us. I can only tell you what it isn't. The Archdemon. Uh, nowhere to put this other than right now, but uh, fun fact, this is actually called Dragon Spear in the files doesn't really add anything to the piece, but a fun fact. Anyway, uh, this one is interesting because Gatsy mentions the depth of the carving being extremely important, but us as players can't actually make that out. So I think the best way to understand this is to highlight what he is talking about in the codex while I read it aloud. Because what I'm thinking is that this is one archdemon and the three heads are the reaction to the three lines. Because piercing line one is on the same tier as the Deventer second from left, and the middle head turned away. Piercing line 2 is the same tier as Tevinter 5th on the left, and the first head turned away. And the line that misses it, that's the same tier as the big Tevinter farthest out, and the dragon is looking straight at him. So the ones who did damage, the dragon doesn't care. The one who faked it, the dragon gives him an eyeful. Gatsy goes on to say that if the artist wanted this piece to be about someone specific, she would have been able to do so. So this piece is likely not the literal magisters, but rather interpretation of Tevinter itself. 
You've got four Aided of the Empire, where they're part of the dragon, two where they damage it, and one where they miss the point entirely and it gets them eaten. Now here you expect me to come up with the five different ways to match their calendar as per the codex, but uh, I'm afraid I don't actually really have that much. Now Gatsy mentions ages, so assuming that this is made in the seventh age, which actually is somewhat important, I'll get back to that later, then you have one person per age, and the second and fifth figure strike the dragon and it doesn't care while the seventh misses and the dragon cares. The rest of the ages don't really do anything. So while the second age we did see Tevinter split from the Chantry, and the fifth age was when the bulk of the exalted Martian Tevinter happened, and then the seventh age was when the Canari War was ended and Tevinter refused to sign the Treaty of Peace, Tevinter is big and important enough to pick any age and find something interesting about it. Um, so, eh. While there is a chance that Gassy is wrong about the meaning, I feel like the devs wouldn't give us information like he gave for no reason. One thing I would like to ask is this. What in this image represents Tevinter? Is it the dragon? The magisters? Both? Is this Tevinter hurting something? Or is something trying to hurt Tevinter? Or is Tevinter hurting itself? And further, if this is supposed to be, like, just representative of the ages, um, is it, like, does he mean actual ages or just specific hundred-year segments? Like, is this pre- or post-Chantry? Like, if this is pre-Chantry, then, like, the Tevinter history isn't that clear to us. So, uh, this might be about a history we don't actually know yet. The whole set. From what it seems, the carvings tell the story of how the Magisters broke into the Golden City, with the exception of the Archdemon, which I'm unclear on how it actually connects with the other four. I would also like to point out that there are a good amount of female figures in these mosaics. I have heard talk of people being disappointed that the Magister Sidereal were male, but this is probably the best proof we have that there was at least one being female. Now, another strange factor is actually feats. Um, not many Tevinter Magisters go barefoot, and like, at least in the concept art, you can- I almost want to say those lines are supposed to be toes. And like, when you wear shoes, like, the shape of your- your arch isn't as defined, so I, they look very barefoot. And there isn't, uh, you know, it's a little bit weird for Tevinter Magisters to go barefoot. Uh, but there is a whole faction in Thetis that does go barefoot quite often. The Elves. Mix in the fact there is an actual old god of slaves, Anderol. Could the high priest of Anderol have been an elven slave mage? So, Gatsy doesn't say much about the whole set, other than that it's early to venture. How early? Again, I can't say. He mentions that part of it was made from the dust of the Hundred Pillars, which is just like a strange mountain range in between Deventer and Antiva, and that doesn't give us a good date at all. So I will say that early doesn't normally mean around the Sixth Age when Canari were supposed to be in Thetis. Because like in Devinter history, that's actually pretty young. Like devinter has been around for thousands of years. Like it's, you know, like 300 years ago is nothing. So the big question for me here is how did the Carver know of the Canari? And why didn't Gatsy mention that? Were the Canari enslaved by the Magisters in their homeland and sacrificed to break into the Golden City? We know from historical documents that many, many, many elven servants were missing in what is now Kirkwall, and that Kirkwall is hinted at being the place where the Magister held the ritual. But, but, but could Kirkwall also be the cradle of the Canari race, or perhaps the final resting place of those stolen from their homes across the sea? And that, dear patrons, is sadly all we know about the mysterious mosaic collection. Do you still have lingering questions? Proof that I'm wrong? Comments about your own fan theory? Feel free to tweet me at, at Gildarthon on Twitter or send a PM to user Gillanon on Reddit. Dresh Sheral.